Hey guys, what's up? It's Ben, your host with the most, back at it with another one. Coming at you live with Satoshi's treasure, clue number two for key number four. So, yesterday, Easter Sunday, the second clue was released on the website, and um, I did what any rational person would do, pounded away at my keyboard and tried to solve it. You know, me trying to solve it looked a little something like this. Stop lying, Ben, you didn't solve anything. <sighs> yeah, so uh, about uh, me solving it, uh, that was a lie. I just, I just tried to make myself look cool. Yeah. But, you know, if you guys haven't seen it, uh, I'll show it to you right here. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so hey, what's up, guys? Um, this isn't going to be that long of a video. I'm going to jump right into it. So if you go right over to, uh, oops, ooh, that's embarrassing. Okay, if you go right over to Satoshi's Treasure, um, the homepage, you'll see this clue, follow the crazy rabbit. What's on this page? Follow the crazy rabbit. Congratulations to the hunters who have congregated at the locations indicated in my first transmission and found the keys of the hunt. A hearty congratulations as well to the few who realized that travel in metaspace was not entirely necessary to find these keys. While parts of the hunt are solitary endeavors, most of the time you will need to work together as a clan and pull together. The next challenge is solvable for an individual only at a considerable expense. A group is nothing. Ooh, sorry about that. Ooh, sorry, I still got a landline. Okay, so uh, this challenge is solvable for an individual only at a considerable expense. For a large group, it is nothing but a simple task. In my hunt, as in life, remember, nothing is as it seems. Well, let's see what's not as it seems. Let's jump into it. We got a GIF. What do we do with that GIF? We save it as an image. We save it as an image. Let's jump right into this GIF. GIF. So we see this GIF. It's nothing really too special, but let's inspect this a little long more. So we open it with Notepad. And uh, we, we're just going to scroll through this and see if there's anything suspicious. Oh, oh, what's what's this? A text file is hidden in this GIF. So what can we do? Uh, well, let's try opening with sevens. Oh, my God, there's the text file. We open this text file. We got a link. Perfect. So now let's copy this link, put this into here. My other desktop, I'm just going to open this. Okay, so now let's ja uh, grab the Jade key. So the ST0001. And we entered this into here, and we got another message. The Jade key slides into lock with no play and turns at the slightest pressure. A soft click as it, as if from far away comes from the lock mechanism. Oh my god, that's uh, maybe I'm just like really bad at reading. And it swings open to reveal an empty vault with a scrap uh, of old paper on the floor. You pick it up and read it carefully. Read the hand. Oh my god, I can't read. It's time to go and stock up on eggs for the rabbit. And we get this other link. Well, what happens if we uh, search this link? Um, it's no longer activated right now. Oh, oh no, it's sold out. So we get this colorful egg. And what's this colorful egg? Well, if we buy this colorful egg, we'll have to wait to get an email. But eventually, we're going to get a fragment of this egg. And the final egg looks like this. And now what happens when we unlock this, this QR code? Well, we end up going to a little website, and that website looks a little something like this. And now, if you did scan the QR code, you'll get a password associated with that QR code. Now, you copy and paste the password, and the pass per, uh, password is a dim light illuminated the darkness. 
casting a shadow on the walls and revealing a single key hanging from a thread in the middle of the vault. So let's just uh, paste that in. And congratulations, you got the fourth key. Now we're left with a little bit of a poem right here. Um, the one thing that I do want to note about these poems is there's been attention to grammar. Also, if you do split up these poems into um, lines defined by the punctuation, you'll always get six lines. I'm not too sure if that's a significance in anything. You also do notice this double dash. I'm not too sure if it's just the grammar choice of that they want, but let's jump right into this poem. I envy them, Amor. The humans on the cusp. The journey has required them to actually journey instead of just blinking through the interstellar foam. Back then, you could solve a puzzle on your own instead of just feeding it through the Omniform. Or perhaps I'm wrong. But I think they were, mu or they must be hap have been happier. Intercept from ST two nine one transmission. So does that mean anything? Not too sure. We have uh, nine hundred ninety six more keys left to find, or ninety five. Um, no, yeah, ninety six. Uh, what's next? Who knows? Is there a key hidden somewhere? In all of this test text, if we put it together, who knows? Um, I'll update you if I find anything else. Uh, I have been working, though. I've been trying to uh, decipher uh, these poems or excerpts. I've found some information. Um, one thing that is really cool to note is all the tense that they are talking in are different. And uh, so, for example, one's just talking in past tense um, about an experience he's had. One's like a flashback memory where he's talking in present tense. And then the other one's like a third person where these these guys, like Mamor, uh, they're talking and observing the people in the hunt. So it's almost like they're creating a storyline outside of this to give us hints, which is super cool. Who knows? Um, but until next time, peace.